good evening okay i'm i hope you guys can hear me clearly uh i'm going to start with one of pooja's images which i've selected which is i think this one 5161 yeah that's the one i think you guys can see this clearly give me a second let me just confirm it is 5161 that's correct Okay, so the first thing is, as you can see, I've got a JPEG and I've got a RAW file right next to it. So click on the RAW file and open it up in your Photoshop. There you go. That's opened up in RAW. Um, the other first thing I'm going to do is create a final edit folder. So I can save my files here. Now going back to this one. Okay, so the first thing I do here is check if the temperature is right. You can see here. I'm going to take this and play around with this till I think I'm happy with the color I get. I'm going to leave it somewhere there. Move the tint around to see what colors I want. This makes it quite bluish. I'm going to keep it slightly in the blue zone because I like the tint of blue. Okay, I'm going to mess with the exposure. I don't want it that bright. I want it a bit dark. But I think I might bring that in later. First, I'm going to work on this in the raw image so that I can save it. Um, and I can work with it, work on the pose and stuff not play with too much with the contrast here just a little bit bring out the highlight bring that out that looks good uh, shadows I normally darken because I like my depth I like my blacks uh, not gonna touch whites again blacks I'm gonna bring that in so that it gives it a nice contour on the face um, clarity so when I'm working with heavy skin I always pull down the clarity a little bit because it makes my life easier to work on the skin later. Obviously don't overdo this because it uh, messes up the image. Dehaze sort of darkens the lower parts of the level. That's quite nice. I normally bring up the vibrance just by a little bit. I don't mess with the saturation. I just bring up the vibrance just by a little. As you can see, it's already quite a rich image. Uh, in the second section or third, I normally ignore the third. I go straight to the fourth, which is when you work with the colors. Now, I normally stay away from hue. Don't touch that. Go to saturation, and I'm going to uh, saturate the red a little bit, maybe, because that's one of my main colors. I'm going to desaturate the orange just slightly, and I'm going to bring out the blues, because her skin is on the blue. And even the pink, maybe. It's got a bigger pink, if you can see. Not too much, just a hint. Actually, I'm going to leave that. It doesn't look too this thing. You can, by increasing and decreasing the bar quickly, you can see how the image changes, where it's getting affected. So, that's a good way to test this. See, that's all over the body. This is a black and white image. That's quite interesting. Keep the red there. So, see if you do this, take the orange out, keep the orange in, see how it works. Um, keeping the red quite thick. Okay, luminance. Now, now I get to decide what happens to the colors individually. So, I'm going to keep them as they are. Bring up the orange just down by a notch. And Okay, something's going wrong with the saturation then. Okay. Let me go back to this and see exactly what's happened. I think our eye is too blue, so I need to sort that out. Okay, that's already there. I can't do anything. The eye, eye is blue in the shot. Okay, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Okay, that's how much I'm going to mess with at this stage. You open image. 
there you are. What you could also do is in the same segment, I sort of missed that out, um, is you can go, let's say, let me just show you one another raw file. If I open up any of the other raw files, let's say if I opened up this one. If I make changes to this, right, and if I want to follow that format, I can go here to this drop down menu, go to save setting. Okay, press OK, save everything, and just save that file in a folder there. I'm not saving it now, cancel. And next time you can just load it from the same section. Go to load settings and you can load the same the same adjustments you made to this image. You can uh, load it onto another image. So basically when you're working on a set of images which have similar lighting, uh, this is a great tool. So I'm going to cancel this. Okay, coming back to this one. Now as you see, this background layer is locked. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is do Control J and create a second layer, right? Now normally on the first layer, when I work on the first layer, the first thing I do is work on Liquify. So I go on to Filter, then go on to Liquify, and I work on if I want to change any body shapes. So for example, if I did that, lower that, uh, you can change the brush size by pressing... Uh, the bracket key up and down yeah even out that neckline because it's looking funny right let's say I'm happy with that yeah Let's say I'm happy with that. You can mess with the hair as well. You can really individually select which section you want to bring out. Bring me out. But then again, don't misuse this tool because if you get carried away, it can <laughs> really get quite messy. Um, so use it wisely. Don't overdo it. Right? Use it just to give you an extra edge, not to sort of mess with things from where they are. Okay, let me move the shoulders if I let's see to bring that down. Normally if you elongate the neck, though this thing looks better. Um, let me bring that dress down a little bit there. There you go. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. Let's go with this. Uh, one second. Okay, even out the top, we'll press OK. So now that it's applied on that layer. Um, now, again, this was just for that adjustment. I'm going to create another layer. And now I'll start working on the obvious uh, errors which we need to sort of file out. So I'll go to the Spot Healing Brush tool, which is the automatic one. So let's say if you zoom in and again control the brush size and take out anything which is specifically obvious. Oh yeah, there you go. Now you can see all the marks which we need to work on. So you can get really small like that. Oh yeah, remember, it picks from your surroundings when it's healing. So you can't have like major chunks of aberration, otherwise it will not really heal anything. So pick small, change your brush size according to the result you want and work on it that way. This is the boring part. You have to sit through and find how much you want to really mess with this. Uh, as I said, the idea is not to get too carried away with anything. Use it wisely, use it sparingly. Don't start over airbrushing because that's where the problem is. Okay, this is the problem area. 
So I'm going to do that in a separate bit completely because that's a heavy section to sort of deal with. I'll just do the obvious marks where it's kind of standing out. There's that hair coming through. I'm going to take on the forehead separately completely. This is the tricky bit. Go back, look at it. it. Looks fairly clean. Much cleaner than it was before. Okay, now um, let's say these two layers are done. I create another one, and with this, I'm going to first work on. Th I'm going to work on the this thing on three separate stages. Oh yeah, before I make that layer, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to take the clone stamp tool and make sure its opacity is at like 30 percent. Uh, reduce the opacity so that you can work on it gently otherwise it becomes too harsh I'm going to take care of this under eye very lightly so the trick with this is pick from right under where it is because then the smoothness is there it doesn't sort of feel abrupt there you go the under eye is sort of taken care of Gonna feel that ones. Just gonna go back a few steps. That shine is forming like a. Slightly better. Okay. That ear is popping out. Okay. The other thing I need to do is bridge all these gaps in the hair. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritties of the hair now, but I'll show you roughly a good way to sort of get rid of all that hair which is sort of popping out outside. Okay, I've blocked all the basic patches. I used the spot healing brush tool again. Okay, now I'm going to create another layer and now I'm going to go into the, the lasso tool. The lasso tool now. So basically after creating a layer, a spell layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on each one of these sections. So I'm going to select roughly, let's say that much. Try and keep the highlights of the sections you don't want touched, keep away from there. Go as close to this thing as possible. This gets a little getting used to. Okay, now once that's selected, I go to under select, go to modify, go to feather. So I give it a feather of 22, that's basically based on the pixel of image I'm using. Um, the higher the feather, the smoother it is, the effect which you're sort of trying to apply on that. So that it doesn't sort of demarcate those two segments into a very graphic, this thing. Now go into filter, go into blur, and Gaussian blur. Now I know this looks absurdly, uh, this thing, but the higher it is, the better, the blur. Okay, now what happens is when you do the Gaussian blur, it kind of darkens the area. So press Ctrl L and work with the levels so that you can make that brighter. You see that difference? Yeah, make that extra bright. That's okay. And then do Ctrl D, which is it's done. Now this looks very odd. As you can see, it looks like as if it's a plastic neck. Now what we're going to do is just go here to the layer and go to the opacity and reduce it according to how much we want that effect to sort of take place on the neck. So I'm going to keep it to about that much. Right? I'm quite happy with that. That's at 25% right now, but don't stick to it. You have to create your own uh, percentage, which works. I'm going to blend that layer down with a control E so that layer comes down to the lower layer. I'm going to create another layer and work on another section, which is now the forehead, which is the harshest part. 
So I'm going to go in there. Try and avoid the edges which are nice because you want to maintain that effect. But wherever there is a bit of distortion, I'm going to go in there. And there I have it. Again, same process. Go into select, go to modify, feather, 22, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm at 41 right now. That's quite a high blur. Um, this one I can keep dark so I really don't have to mess with it. I'm going to keep it at that and just do a control D. And now that's extremely smooth as you can see. Uh, I'm going to bring the layer down again and work with somewhere in the middle. I'm going to keep it at that. That looks still fairly realistic. Blend that down. Now this is what the image looks like. I think we can go in for another round or we can try using the healing brush tool. Now this is not the same as the spot healing. Uh, create another layer again, control J. Now take from a darker spot which is going to be difficult because there are no darker spots. Ah, so let's go with this. Press alt and click here. So what you're doing is you're selecting the texture from here and now you're going to apply it on the forehead and see how it works. Do you see the difference? I'm smoothening out. It's taking, always take from a darker place because then it works out nicely. If you take from a lighter place, it will not work. It will get you a lot of patches. Right now, so this looks patchy, but just hold on. Uh, reduce the side and get into the nitty gritties. There you go, all smoothened out. Now I'm going to again pull back the opacity based on how much I want it at. I'm going to keep it at roughly 50% so that it has some reality to it. Okay, that's that layer done. Okay, I think that's still a bit too much. So I'm going to pull that back. Yeah at about 20 percent the naturalism has to stay there you go now take from the same spot okay wait I need to do this in layering I keep creating layers and pulling them down so that whatever effects changes I'm making I'm sort of doing it in one after the other and I can control how much of it I actually want on that layer trying this out let's see if this works I don't want it to be plain red because I can just take that and paste it but I don't want to, want to maintain some of the texture which is there on her forehead on her skin Again, pull back on the layer, and that I'm satisfied with. Okay, there's a light glow on the head, which I don't mind. Okay, now I'm gonna again create another layer and work on the skin. You can do this in one batch. and keep the silver out and there now again same thing going to select modify feather 22 filter Gaussian blur that to control L bring out the face Save it, control D, work on the layer and bring it down to how much ever smoothness you want. That's too smooth for me, so I'm going to bring it down further. And that's how smooth it's going to be.
Looks a bit too smooth to me still. I'm gonna bring it down. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, now we've done that. Now I'm gonna get rid of some of the stragglers which are there. So go into the spot healing tool. You know all this hair coming out. See if you can get rid of some of them. These are just the big chunks. If I really want to do that, I mean clean it up nicely. Uh, it's a slightly longer process, but you can do that, which is the clone stamp tool, which I will show you right now. Okay, so I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool, I've switched, press alt, take from right there and then so sort of close it in so the hair doesn't look all unruly and popping out. You can, if you want a sharper look, you can go in and do that. sort this area out first so it's basically the place you're drawing it from is moving with you every time you move the cursor as you can see the arrow on the other side so make sure wherever you're taking it from is also clean otherwise it's pointless to use this tool I'll go away a little bit yeah bring it in from there You can really get in and like clean up as much as you want. I'm leaving some here because so that it looks a bit natural. As I said, keep the opacity on this brush quite low so that you're really not making hard cuts. Uh, there you go, take it from here again. put into the hair itself again this is like if you really want to spend time on an image you can get along to making it as perfect but don't overdo it because sometimes Anything which is over it, it looks really bad. And keep doing this. Take care of all the random strands which are popping out. Sorry guys, I know this is really boring. But I've started the video, I'm going to finish this now. <laughs> See again, these are my techniques. You guys can, you're free to like surf the web and discover your own. This is what I've just sort of made my practice over the years. I'm sure there are better ways and better techniques to do everything. You have to just find it and get used to it. See, this is all the cleanup work. After this comes the toning and the grading, which is the most fun. Okay, I have to go further away and pull from there because... To do this quicker, I can increase the percentage of the 
flow and opacity of the brush and now it will go faster I'm going to try and keep these weird shapes which are formed of the hair There you go, looks much neater. That year seems to be bothering me. I'm kind of going to cheat that a little bit and I'm going to get rid of that because it's really becoming a nuisance to it's standing out too much. Let's just put hair there. There you go. Yeah, there you've got an image. There's some small thing on the brow just standing out. There you go. Get rid of anything which kind of distracts and takes away from what the image is supposed to be. Right? So that looks fine to me. That looks like a nice, neat image. Now, create another layer. And oh yeah, also I'm going to crop this just slightly from that side. That's it. Just a little bit. Now it feels more central, even though it might not be. Um, also I feel this section now I'm going to liquefy and this is standing out a bit I need to bridge this oh, it's looking funny again don't mess around with these things too much do it to your own distraction Okay, now, oh yeah, also, you don't know when Photoshop could crash on you, so control shift S and always save a PSD file while you start working. Okay. Just so that if it crashes, if your computer crashes or whatever, you can come back to this and all this work which you put in doesn't go to waste. Okay, now I've created another copy. I'm going to go into Nick Collection, which is under Filters. I'm going to Analog FX Pro because that's what I use for color work, which basically gives you old camera effects. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through what they have, but there's a custom section. So I'm going to go to my custom section. I'll just show you. Um, I don't know if I opened a new layer or not, so I'm going to cancel this, and open a new layer, and then open it again. This might be the longest Photoshop tutorial like on YouTube. I'm so sorry, I know it's taking a lot of time, but we're almost there. We're right at the end. Analog FX Pro, opening up the image again. So you're going to start with the camera section here, which is already the classic cameras. But I'll go to my custom bar here, which already has these presets ready. Right? So I'm going to pick the one which I think is closest to what I want. I'm going to work on that and I'm going to save that as, let's say, Pooja something. So I already have some of old Pooja's presets which I've worked on. So, you know, this goes quite red, but it's quite nice. I quite like it. It's a bit dark. This is not as dark. See, this is the zone, which is quite nice. I like this one. I like this one. This one is quite nice. So go to the one which you think is closest to what you want. And then, on this side, I can work with what exactly I want from that image. Hi, sorry, I think it got cut off. 
So yeah, I, uh, after going through the basic adjustments, I've come to lens vignette and you can move this around according to where you want your darkness in this thing to fall and you can adjust what the amount is or if you want a rectangle or a circle so you can choose that I kind of like it somewhere here so we stick it there or rectangle gives it more depth keep it there um, go to film type and you can decide what the strength of the filter would be right so I'm going to keep it somewhere there and you can also decide the amount of grain you want to add here so I'm going to keep it a little grainy and now after you've reached this part and you're happy where this is uh, you go here next to the custom there's a plus sign there so click on the plus sign and name your preset I'm going to name this Pooja orange okay press ok and that gets added up here so next time you come back with any other picture you will have whatever you worked on in this image as a preset for your next image okay so press ok and it will apply it to this image just wait for it to happen but it's what it's doing it's applying it on another layer so now using that I'm going to adjust what I want and not want from that last change Again, by changing the opacity and merging the layer down, you can decide how much you want to keep and how much you don't want to keep. Let's see what we get. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to change. If I change opacity, what does it look like? Okay, I lose the effect. I kind of like the effect. Okay, but what I want is, it's a bit faded for me. I know you guys can't see it in that angle. I want it a bit more faded, so I'm going to create another layer and go into filter, nick collection, and Viveza right now I do most of my like harsh toning on this part so I'm going to increase the saturation by a bit increase the structure by a lot right and I'm going to go to the graph and pull it from the middle so it becomes really dark right also darken the blacks a bit more whiten the whites and press OK and that will apply it to this and again, I'll pull that layer back to take away from it as much as I want. There you go. It look very, looks very dark. You can see. Now I'm going to pull it back to what I want from it. I think I'm okay with this much. Okay. Okay, now pull that back. I want to do one more thing which is good I can show you guys now is again create another Viveza layer and the good thing about Viveza is you can de add these control points and let's say first I'm going to zoom in here let's see what I'm doing I'm going to select the arrow again go to the add control point I'm going to smoothen this out a little bit because I think it's a bit too harsh so decrease the contrast and it becomes kind of smooth increase the saturation it's a little blue, we'll keep it that way the structure makes it smooth, there you go keep it slightly smooth increase the warmth I'll keep it there and that's about it There you go, okay. But the same thing I'm gonna do something here is on the lips, I'm gonna bring her lips out. I'm gonna bring her lips and eyes out. One second, to zoom in further. Go back to the arrow, otherwise this thing doesn't work. Now you can adjust how much you're really affecting here. So I'm only gonna take that much. Remember it has a bit of a spill over, so keep the circle slightly smallish. Ah, I'm not getting. Ah, okay. I can increase the contrast. 
brings out the lips I can increase the saturation I can increase the structure that really brings out the lips okay I'm going to leave it there I'm going to take two other ones place it on the eye because I want the eyes to pop I'm going to increase the brightness ever so slightly contrast and structure Reduce the brightness, sorry. Ah, there. That's the size I want. Okay, take another one, place it there. Depends on where you place the marker, it'll have an effect accordingly. So be careful when you choose that. And structure, there you go. Okay. Zoom out. And click on that. And we'll press OK. And I'm happy with that. You'll see the difference. It might be a bit subtle for to capture on the camera, but it has happened. If I do you see the difference? Okay. So now that's it. I'm done. I'm happy with this. Again, save control shift S replace your audio file okay also just to show you the difference um, if you unclick all these other layers under the top one and leave the background one on and then when you unsee this this is where the image started and this is where it got so let me zoom in a bit so you can see the difference from that to this that to this that is fairly creepy isn't it but <laughs> that's what you can do with photoshop that's how cool this is the transformation is here sorry i'm getting really obsessed with this this looks really nice okay anyways so save the file now i normally save this in two formats uh, PSD is done. I'm going to create a high res PNG. So that's Control Shift Alt S. Make sure you're on PNG 24 here. If you scroll down, you'll see an option PNG 24. And then leave the image size as it is. Save. And one second. Go to final, it won't show anything because the other format is in PSD. And save it. There you go. Now, uh, what I normally do is I add a logo. So I'm just going to go and add my logo there for one second. I'm going to take my logo from this one, drag it over to the image, put it at the bottom center. It's too small right now, so I'm going to increase it slightly. Drag it and center align it. Maybe it's a bit too big. I don't like it that big. Now which is fine. Also remember, you can create a crop. So again, I'm going to save this.
and I'm going to save the higher end which is like the horizontal height pixel is 2000 and the other one will automatically change to 1333 based on the ratio you're shooting in but it'll most likely be that and save it basically it gets saved for web that way again PNG format same folder I'll just add web at the end of the name and save that there you go we're done There we are. Hope you guys had fun. Bye.